thanks for all your birthday wishes. You make me blush. And also thank you for 5,000 subscribers. Wow, that's a lot of you. Thanks for watching this. I don't... I hope we we don't disappoint you all. So stick to the end of the video and I'll talk about the characters that are being drawn. Poor Ursula had to draw this poor Inktober twice because she messed up the recording for the first time. So this is her second attempt at doing it. So I'll talk about these after. Right now I want to talk about today's video topic which is a very very specific topic. On my video about secrets or something I was asked about how to write character conflict without driving two characters away from each other. Since it's such a specific question, it'll probably be a bit short to talk about and not a lot of depth to it. But I do think it's a good topic as it kind of dovetails nicely into the larger topic of how do I break things up without destroying everything. I've said it more than a few times that in order to write something good, you have to destroy what you have. And largely this is the case, especially in the earliest stages of writing a story. But sometimes there's times and places where you probably shouldn't wield a sledgehammer and should instead take out your scalpel. However, I think there is a bit of a misunderstanding in the question itself. Driving characters apart may seem like the inevitability of creating conflict between characters. However, this isn't always the case. Yes, it can work as the lowest point for a character, a final challenge in their relationship where they're kind of driven apart. In a way, like driving them apart um, often serves to kind of strengthen their bond in the end, but it doesn't have to be the case. Again, I reiterate. But really, there isn't actually anything big or mysterious to this question. If you don't want your characters to be driven apart, you have to give them reasons to stay. Just because something bad happens between characters and they fight, that doesn't erase their duties. It doesn't erase the bonds they have shared before leading up to this. Conflict will weather their relationship, but it doesn't have to destroy it. It's not an inevitability. There are other options. You also need to keep your character conflict in a scope you can handle or that the story will allow. If you don't want characters to be driven apart, if it's totally distracting, don't give them a conflict that will do that to them. Or even give them a conflict like that that they can resolve a little more easily or strengthen their bond so even the most intense strains on the relationship doesn't break it in the end. In the end, like these conflicts should change them as a character. It should be informing to them. But if it's causing too much duress on the overall plot, it may be time to pull it back a little bit. Basically, if you don't want something to happen, find reasons that it can't happen within your story. And like all writing advice, that kind of sounds very simple, but is really frustrating when you actually get down to it. So yeah, rein in your conflicts. You can do this in so many ways. It's such a specific question, which makes it very difficult to answer. But I hope that gives you kind of like the direction you need to go. It's Saturday morning, so I didn't in depth write this as much as I could. I'm quite sleepy. I had pie for breakfast. It's my birthday. I'm allowed to do that. Oh, it's not actually my birthday anymore. It's birthday Boxing Day, which is Canadian. I realize everyone else doesn't have Boxing Day. Anyways, that's my advice on the character side. Uh, let's get into describing these two boys right here. So these are Slough and Padilla. And um, they're old characters. I've had them for a very long time. They're part of an RP called Wordsmiths. And Wordsmiths was written back when me and Ursula were in grade 12, so it was like 2012 when this was like our baby of an RP. It's like, it's our one of our least magical RPs. It's basically set in the modern world and like writers can like kind of use magic. They just are really persuasive and they can kind of create almost spell like stuff. It's... It's kind of vague what wordsmithing exactly is, but it's like, it's a thing, I guess. Like, it used, like in the initial draft of the story, like wordsmiths, wordsmithing was more magical and more powerful, but as we got into it, it kind of just became basically a contemporary story about writers being writers. So Slough and Padilla are twins. 
Um, their names are uh, Slough Bado Lippy and Guy Phoebus Padilla, and those are both they're <laughs> those are both um what is it anagrams? I think it's anagrams. Oh my god, I I forget the 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 letters can switch up to mean each other, and this has cemented their their twin bond. Yes, they have like a magical twin bond. But it's, I don't know. I don't know where to go with these guys. There's so much here. Okay, so Slough is kind of like a wise, cracking jokester. He's the one that's like leaning up on the blonde one. The blonde one being Padilla. And like Slough's kind of a jerk butt. And he deals with his problems by just like um, singing and laughing at them. He doesn't really take things super seriously. It's kind of like his coping mechanism. He was born with a uh, cerebral palsy. Um, well, I guess, yeah, because you, you can't just develop cerebral palsy. Uh, he, uh, so he has cerebral palsy. His brother Padilla takes care of him to the best of his ability. So Slough is a an erotica writer and he eventually falls in love with his dad's assistant um his dad is like a his dad's a wordsmith and he's like a very popular like author dude he's very professory he has an assistant and when slough's bored and alone at home because padilla is off at work uh he starts calling up his dad's office and bothering the assistant and Eventually, they become friends, and eventually they fall in love, and that's Annika and Slough, and they're a- adorable. I, I want to say they're adorable. I have-, I have, It's been so long since I've RP'd them. I think, deep down, I still love them, but it's just been such a long time. This whole RP basically just became like one big f- happy family, and they just did big happy family things, which was good. It was good fun. Uh, there was a bunch of side characters, too also fun anyways and so talking about like the initial plot of it all is like pretty weird for me honestly okay and and so then there's padilla who is his twin brother i I keep saying twin brother i hope you recognize that they're twins uh padilla is he's really shy and he's got that he's got that trait where if someone asks him to do something he'll do it he'll like do anything you tell him to do he he doesn't like to disappoint people in any way whatsoever so like even though he'll like complain and he'll hate you and he'll be passive aggressive about everything he will still do the thing and yeah so he doesn't have a lot of control in his own life and since slough's kind of like slough's loud and obnoxious and he can basically get padilla to do anything for him um when when they were kids, like Slough convinced him to to um, get in, uh, yeah, get in Slough's wheelchair and then get pushed down a hill, and then still broke his arm or his foot. Yeah, and they were both having trouble getting around. It's great. Um, yeah, so Slough was kind of rude like that, and kind of the basis of the RP was to initially be like, be like, oh wow, Slough's such a jerk, but Slough's so awful. But then it turns out to be that like. Padilla's pretty awful. Padilla Padilla doesn't really like Slough to have, like, things together on his own because, like, then Padilla feels less useful as a person. Yeah, so Padilla manufactures kind of problems for himself to fix. I forget what the catalyst is, but eventually Slough and Padilla start fighting and ends up meeting a fella and that fella is Armand and Padilla and Armand end up getting together, living happily ever after at some point. Uh, yeah, he moves in with Armand and kind of just ditches Slough. That hurts Slough's feelings a lot and Oh, I know what happens. So their mom shows up eventually at their house and she's like, I don't think you guys can live on your own. You're doing a terrible job. So I think you two should live with me. And their mom is a very controlling lady. She's she's kind of the main villain, main antagonist of Wordsmiths. She's just a really controlling lady. She never really wanted to have Slough and Padilla because of things with 
her and her husband were going poorly and she never really raised them and she kind of resents Slough for being disabled and yes and she likes to just kind of get into their life control things so that's what she does. Padilla can't handle this. He ends up meeting Armand and moving in with him and eventually they get together. Yeah, that's basically it. That's that's what happens. It's a lot of romance. Like it sounds very intense and some parts did get intense. But it was it was it was a lot of fluff, this RP, honestly. I just love the um the character interactions with it. Like Annika and Slough are really cute together. And when Slough and Padilla are able to move out and live on their own, they they are eventually able to kind of like fix their relationship and become less like dependent on one another. I found like the major theme running through this was like codependency. Yeah, the, the issues with that. Oh my god, there's so much that happens. They eventually kind of come to terms that their their mom is it's kind of abusive and she's always been abusive she's she's done some pretty awful things to the two of them especially like especially slough she would uh like withhold medication and and she used to just kind of like uh, she she was very verbally abusive and mean and terrible and like slough ends up like not forgiving her for this but like Padilla, who's kind of like, who really likes his mom and is always kind of looking for her approval, eventually tries to like build a relationship back up with them. I think that's where we ended up leaving things off was like Connie, their mom was very upset that Slough didn't want a relationship with her and Slough was like, well, too bad and was kind of mad at Padilla for even trying things out. Yeah. Contemporary RPs are weird to talk about. Like, I know this isn't like completely temporary. Uh, contemporary but it basically is at this point it like all the wordsmithing elements like any magical elements were just like gone and it was just basically just manipulation and stuff which again makes it sound way more intense than it is um it's more just people with like you know normal traumas of life just kind of dealing padilla likes suits that's his thing him and armand end up getting married at some point I don't know if they get married, actually. I don't know. Either way, they adopt a daughter. Her name's Opal. She's very cute. They get a sphinx cat that's pretty awful. It was just a badly behaved cat, and they don't know what to do with it. But Opal loves it, so they can't get rid of it, even though Opal's kind of scared of it. Been there. Um, Slau and Annika eventually also have a kid together, I think. Yeah, they do. Dawson, their dad, ends up remarrying and um, he has a kid. They have another brother who is like s super young compared to them. Like they're like 20 when he's born, basically. He, he was a bit of a mistake and a bit of a non-purpose to try and like, like, like Connie had a kid to try and stop Dawson from wanting to leave and it would have worked too if not for th those if not for her being a meanie but yeah and that that kid's floyd i think floyd gets drawn later and then linda and dawson who are the i feel like oh yeah i'm they're gonna be the last day of october yeah linda and dawson end up having a kid and that kid is like um slav and padilla's half sister tourmaline she's cute she's very cute she's adorable she's basically just mini mini linda right <laughs> that's how kids work <laughs> oh my god it's so weird to talk about this rp because like i remember doing this rp when we were in like yeah we were in high school like i remember the first drafts of it were on our own private rp forum before we even used discord or hangouts or any of that stuff we had our own little forum where we kept all of our rps and we would be do our replies during graphic design class so yeah there you go i wish i remembered it better i'm, I'm sorry that i don't maybe our slow will talk better about it slow used to be my baby like i love slow because he deals with his problems by laughing and singing and that was my coping mechanism as well. He was very, very me. And he loved musicals. And who doesn't love musicals? A lot of people. But his love of musicals made me have to watch musicals. And then I was like, ah, oh, I love musicals. 
and I got really into Singing in the Rain, which is like his favorite musical ever because like when he was a kid and he was sad, he would watch Singing in the Rain. It made him happy, it made him forget all of his problems. Just Singing in the Rain. Okay, I I don't have much to add. I'm gonna do. We're gonna be doing a live stream in like an hour and a half from now, so I should rest my voice. Hope to see you there. If you have any questions, please leave them in the section, the comment section where questions go. I want to do a big Q&A at the end. So give me all sorts of questions. They can be questions about all of this RP stuff we've been talking about. They can be questions about your own personal work. Like, what do I do about this wizard? He's just being a jerk. And like, yeah. And also you can check out our comics. You can check out Moonlight. You can check out anything. You can check out a book at the library it's fun and reading is good okay i don't know how to end this goodbye